Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here, and today we're going to talk about how to determine the equation of a sinusoidal function from a graph or from a table of values. If you remember from yesterday, our lesson uh, talked about the idea of these different values that we have. And we have an A value, which is the vertical stretch of compression. The K value is the horizontal stretch of compression by a factor of 1 over K. The D value is shifting left to right, and the C value is shifting up or down. It's and so we have that both for the sine function that starts at the equation of the axis, and we have it for the cosine function that starts at a maximum. So if the sine function goes um, between negative 1, it's negative 1 down there, and 1, it starts at the equation of the axis, goes up to its maximum at 90 degrees, it goes to the equation of the axis again at 180 degrees, minimum at 270, and equation of the axis again at 360. So this is what it looks like. This is just the graph of y equals sine x. And then if we graph the graph of y equals cos x, if we go from negative 1 to 1 there, it starts at a maximum, 90 degrees, it's at the equation of the axis, 180 is back at its uh, minimum, and then back to its maximum at 360 degrees. So that is what our cosine function looks like, and this is y equals cos of x. So we're using each of these and we're transforming them. I want to note a couple of quick things before we actually go ahead and transform them. The first thing I want to note is that if we make the a value negative, that's going to start at a minimum. So it would be the cosine function, but it would start at a minimum if a is negative. Likewise, if we make the a value negative on the sine, it's going to start not going up, but it's going to start by going down like this, and then back up like that. So that's all that the negative a um, does in each of those cases. So we're going to look at two examples here as we consider the following characteristics. So we have the period being the 360 over the, the absolute value of k. So in other words, it's 360 degrees times the 1 over k factor, which simplifies to that. The amplitude is the absolute value of a. The equation of the axis is y equals the c value. And the phase shift, how much it's been shifted either right or left, is that d value. So we're going to use these to determine the equation for the following graph. So the first thing we should note here is if we're going from a maximum to a maximum, that here is 720 degrees. So we could say the period is 720 degrees. And if the period is 720 degrees, and we know that the period is 360 over k, that means that k is 360 over the period. Right? Those follow from one another. So that the k value in this case is 360 over 720, which is 1 half. So we've got a k of a half. And now we work on, I'm going to continue working on um, other things that I can tell relatively easy from the graph. One of the things that's relatively easy to tell from the graph is that I start at negative 3 down here. So it's negative 3. We're going all the way up here to 7. And so we could say, well, the equation of the axis, the equation of the axis is um, y equals the maximum plus the minimum. You add them two together and divide by 2. Well, in this case, the maximum of 7, and if you add negative 3 to that, Dividing it by 2, we get 4 over 2, which means y equals 2 is the equation of the axis. That means that c equals 2. So we found the k value, we found the c value. Has it been phase shifted? It has not been phase shifted if the positive cosine function. So if the positive cosine function, it starts at a max, so no phase shift. So that's the simplest function to consider. You could talk about it being a negative cosine function, but then it's been shifted right 360 degrees to that point. So that would have a d value of positive 360. All right, so the last thing that we want to note here is that the a value is the amplitude is the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. And so that means that 7 minus negative 3 divided by 2. Um, we can see this intuitively. It's going to be uh, 10 over 2, which gives me an amplitude of 5, which makes sense because you're going from 7 all the way down to negative 3. 
that's a difference of 10, and the amplitude's half that. So that's the amplitude. That means the A value is equal to 5. And I should have stated this earlier, but the no phase shift meant that the D value was equal to 0. And our equation for this function, I'll just write it below here. The equation is this. Y equals, in general, it's A, and it's going to be a cosine function, we said. So K X minus D degrees plus C. And so we're going to sub these values in. A is going to be, it's a positive cosine, so it's just positive 5, positive 5 cos. K is going to be 1 half. X minus D, X minus 0. So you don't need to do anything there. You can just say 1 half X even. And then plus 2. So we could simplify this to Y equals 5 cos 1 half X degrees plus 2. That is the equation of that graph. So let's look at one more example that now gives you a table of values instead of a graph and how you get from the table of values to a graph to an equation. So this says in the Bay of Fundy, the depth of water D of T in meters varies significantly throughout each day as shown. The time at midnight is 5.57 meters and then you can see the highest it gets up to is about 10.66 meters at 3 a.m. However, notice something here, and we're going to graph it to see in a minute. These are almost the same, meaning that at 3.30, that is actually when it gets to its maximum water depth. It's not at 3 a.m. So if these are about the same, you've got to take the midpoint between them. Likewise, um, over here, we can see just from these that these are not exact, are quite the same, so that means that 9 a.m. is not necessarily the shortest or the least depth of water. So let's graph that and see if that's actually the case here and see how that plays out. So we prepare a scatter plot of the data, and 12 a.m. is going to be zero hours. So that is right there, zero hours. And then we plot that point, plot another point all the way along like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a nice curve through those points. And you'll notice that we go up between D and E, and the, uh, the most water depth is right there. If I can get my pen to actually show that. There we go. And you can see that it's almost at J there, almost at this 9, but it's maybe a little bit past that where the, the uh, least depth of water is. So what are the maximum and minimum depths of water? That's the first thing we'll consider here. The first thing we'll consider is the maximum. That looks to be, uh, it's a little bit above what we had, a, yeah, above, it was a little bit above 10.66. Uh, I'm going to say that that looks to be approximately uh, 10.7 meters. Okay, just a little bit above that. And the minimum is about 3.2 meters. So J was 3.21, it's just below that, 3.2 meters. So you might have found something slightly different, and this is where I have to give some, uh, th there can be some range of, of answers here, but it should be pretty close to the same values. Part C then now says, determine an equation to represent this curve. Show all of your work. Well, we need to start finding some properties of this curve. So here we go. The first property I'm interested in is the amplitude. The amplitude is equal to... Um, the max minus the min divided by 2, right? It's the difference between the maximum and minimum point. So if you take 10.7 and you subtract 3.2, we get an amplitude of, after dividing by 2, 3.75 in this particular case, which means their A value is 3.75. Now you might say, well, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, we'll come to that later, uh, but for now we'll say it's uh, 3.75 and we'll add the negative if needed later. The next thing I want to deal with is the equation of the axis. The equation of the axis is y equals c and we know that to find that um, we can take the maximum plus the minimum and divide it by 2 because the equation of the axis is the average of the maximum and minimum. How do you find an average? You divide them the two together and you divide, you add the two together and you divide by two. And so when you do that, you get a value of 6.95. So that means because y equals 6.95, that c, 
me be more, more specific about that. That means that the C value is 6.95. It's been shifted 6.95 units up. Well, what's the period here? The period, uh, if we try to find it from the midpoint, somewhere in there, that's a little tricky. I would always try to take the period from the vertex. So we're going to go from uh, this vertex right here to this vertex, which is hard to tell there as well. But I think the clearest points you can choose are this point right here, because we can clearly see where that minimum is, and this minimum right about here. We can clearly see where that minimum is. And so uh, what I've done to find those is I'm saying this is about 9.1, and this over here is about negative 2.2. So negative 2.2 to 9.1. So we can go ahead and we can say, well, the period is um, the, the distance between those. So it's going from two, negative 2.2 all the way to 9.1. So it's that far total, which gives you a period of 11.3. So we need to, from that, determine the K value. We know that the K value is 360 over the period, and the period is 360 over K. They're, they're right, rearranging the equation. You get period is 360 over K. And so in this particular case, 360 divided by 11.3 gives you a K value of 31.86. So K is 31.86. The only value I'm missing now is the phase shift. And this is where things get a little interesting because you can have more than one answer here. The key idea with the phase shift is we want to keep the phase shift to less than half the period. To less than half the period. I want to put a little star beside that. Um, because technically you could say, well, let's start the function over here. Let's start the function over here. Let's start the function over here. We want to keep it within um, about six in this case. So the two places I could start the function at is I could start it there at negative 2.2. Or I could start it right here at 3.75. Okay, so let's go ahead and consider this possible C cases. In this one, it would be C equals uh, positive 3. Point, not 3.75, sorry, 3.5. Uh, halfway between the third and the fourth hour. This one over here. Um, would be negative 2.2, so the C value would be negative 2.2. Now, consider the following. If we start with this point up here, the C is 3.5, that would most easily be a cosine function. However, I don't have to start with that maximum. I could start with this minimum instead. And in that case, the C value would be negative 2.2, but because it starts at a minimum, that would be a negative cosine function. So if I'm going to use this C value, I'm going to use a negative cosine function. In other words, the A value is going to be negative. If I'm going to use this C value, this is going to be a positive cosine function because it starts, like I said, at a maximum. So I'm going to write both of these equations, and they're technically both correct. So in the one case, the C value is 3.5, positive cosine. In the other case, the C value is um, negative 2.2, and that's a negative cosine. So let's see what that looks like. Remember the equation is y equals a cosine of kx minus d plus c. So if I substitute a in there, I get 3.75 cosine of 31.86 times x uh, minus 3.5. If I'm using the positive 3.5, and I put a little degree symbol there. And then I'm adding to that 6.95. Or it could be negative 3.75 cosine of 31.86 times x plus 2.2. So I'm subtracting the negative 2.2, which may, means I'm going to add them together. And that is plus 6.95. Now keep in mind this was negative because... Uh, we've used the starting point at the minimum. This one's positive because we've used the starting point at the maximum. 
Now, some of you who are really keen might be asking, well, why didn't we think about using a side function? Wouldn't that be the least of a phase shift? And, and that's a great idea, but it's sometimes really hard to see exactly where that sine function uh, starts at. And so um, if it's been shifted at all to the left or right, it's usually better to use a cosine because we can more clearly see where the max or min are. So it's not wrong to have a, co a sine function. You could have used sine instead of cosine, but it's just a little, uh, you need to be a little more careful about where it's been shifted to. So there you go. That's uh, your answer. Uh, two possible answers, and then technically you could also have a sine function um, that would be acceptable as well. All the best as you work through your own practice of this.